He whipped the cyclone with Thane, aiming to control the wild whirling wind. Pecos Bill was the wildest, hootin' tootin'est son of a cowboy who ever lived. Why, before Pecos Bill had arrived on the scene, the wild, wild west was simply known as the West. This was no happy accident. Lady Fate dabbled her pretty little fingers into Bill's life the day she decided to push sweet baby Pecos from off of his family's wagon as they attempted to cross the Pecos River down Texas way. As luck had it, a kindly pack of coyotes happened upon little Bill, and they decided to raise him up as one of their own as opposed to eating them. For this reason, it should surprise no level-headed man or woman that when Bill's brother finally found him about 20 years odd later, Bill was naked as a cactus and hairier than a muskrat howling at the moon. Well, by the time Pecos Bill had met Slewfoot Sue, he had adapted to a more human way of life, complete with clothes and boots and spurs and of course your traditional 10 gallon hat. But sticking to his wild nature, Pecos Bill had traded in his lasso and whip for two giant rattlesnakes, one named Shake, the other named Fang, respectively. Slewfoot Sue was impressed. And likewise, Pecos Bill was taken aback by Slewfoot's womanly wiles. In short, he thought she was purdy. The fact that she rode a cougar instead of a horse hurt his feelings not at all. They fell in love, and Pecos started thinking, it's about time I slow down a bit. So he bought a ring of gold for Slewfoot Sue. But when she saw that small token, she said, Pecos Bill, you have underdone yourself. Why, if all of your love could be held within this tiny ring, then sir, you have no love for me at all. And I ain't never gonna marry the likes of you. Pecos never shrank from a challenge. Nope, he saw this as simply an opportunity to impress Slewfoot Sue with his magnificent cowboy in him. First things first, he made his way out to California, where he kicked about a mountainside for a spell until it revealed its secret stash of golden nuggets. Having filled several stacks of the shiny metal, he then made his way out east to West Virginia. Sauntering into a coal mine, he paid the miners one lump of gold for 100 clumps of coal apiece. At this point, he was ready to persuade Slewfoot Sue to marry him. But first, he needed to forge a ring large enough to contain all of his love for her. Putting his spurs into his wild Mustang Widowmaker, he galloped back to Texas. Upon his arrival, a mighty storm began a brewing. Pecos grinned. He looked up and watched a tornado the likes the world had never seen twist to the ground. It tore across the Texas countryside, aiming to flatten the panhandle, going first through Amarillo or on its way to Abilene. Now Pecos Bill had never met a steed he could not mount nor tame. He took Widowmaker up alongside the twister, stood up on the Mustang's back, and with a yee-haw, leapt aboard the tornado. He tumbled around a bit until he could lasso the beast with his rattlesnake shake. He whipped the cyclone with Thane, aiming to control the wild whirling wind. He did the trick. Bill settled in for the long haul, knowing that his work had just begun. He whipped that whirling dervish again and it shot out to the Appalachians where he shouted out to his good buddy, John Henry. Howdy, John, might if I borrow that there nine pound hammer of yours? John being a kindly man obliged. Pecos caught the hammer and he set to striking the golden coal as it tore about the twister. Golden blue lightning flashed from within. 
The gold revolved into a single band, wide as the twister herself and the pressure crushed the coal into diamonds. That's right, Pecos Bill forged his very own engagement ring on the back of that wild twister. But at this point, it was still too hot to touch. Not to worry, Pecos Bill knew just what to do. He drove that twister out to Arizona where the thirsty tornado drank all the river water out of what is now known as the Grand Canyon as a result. The river water cooled off the ring, but the ring warmed up the water. Too tepid for the twister's taste, it spat poof! All that liquid far up north to form the Great Lakes. The now too tired twister began to tucker out. It slowed its pace a bit and Bill drove it back to Texas where it finally puttered. All the other cowboys, impressed by Pecos' skill, started an annual event called the Rodeo, wherein they'd ride the wildest beast they could possibly muster. As for Sloop Foot Sue, she accepted Bill's proposal and his twister forged ring. They married and they lived half, well, they lived, but the rest is a story for another day. Hey, I hope you enjoyed another one of my stories that pop. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and give me a like so my video can spread far and wide and everybody can enjoy the tale of Pecos Bill and the Texas Twister. Until next week, keep on popping.